Hello, this is video part two. YouTube cut me short on the first video. Today it seems like I'm just going to make videos that are eight minutes, thirty seconds. So I'm going to have to cover five events the best I can in eight minutes, thirty seconds. Let's go. The f number five on my list is field hockey. Won the national championship my freshman year. Um, the first half of that game was pretty much blah, and it, Maryland won. I mean, Maryland led the first half one zero. So and then the same half is kind of blah, and then all of a sudden the last 10 minutes happen, and we have like a big melee. So we score like 9 minutes remaining, so it was 1-1, one, one. and like 30 seconds later, Maryland's back on, they scored their goal, so they're up 2-1. Um, so we're just trying, we're doing everything we can, we pull up goal, tender around everything, so we can try to get this game time goal. And Maryland, I mean, not Maryland, one of our forwards goes up and like smacks the ball from distance, but she, it was open, and she, it, she laid it in, so it's 2-2. Two, two. And then, with one minute left, Maryland kind of gets over-aggressive because we have the ball. And the referee decided, we ha I've had enough. Penalty corner UNC. So, we line up and everything, get ready. And then, um, not move fast enough. And then, 15 seconds, the penalty corner is put in. And one of our senior forwards smacked the ball in for a 3-2 win. It was awesome watching the um, National Championship any con like that. I just thought that was phenomenal to watch. So I really, really enjoyed that. Um, on to the next one, number four. The best title for this is Mr. Kendrick Bernie. Um, this is the Miami game from my freshman year. Kendrick Bernie had three interceptions. The game was very bizarre because while there was a lot of offense going on, there's like probably 800 yards combined offense, probably 900 maybe. And But it's it very defensive minded. Kendrick Bernie, every interception he took went the distance. Right before half, the Miami punt, they did a fake punt, so the guy got the first down. Only two plays later, Ja'Cory Harris got harassed by Robert Quinn and sent it to, I mean, threw it to Kendrick Bernie, who returned it for a touchdown. And then in the second half, when Miami was threatening, it was like 23, like 20, something weird like that. And what happened was, um, Another interception happened. Kendrick Byrne is this. He intercepted the ball and then he took it to distance and then he looked like he fumbled it and it landed into one of our another guy's hands. Mar I think his name's Marvin Williams. I may be messing it up. Well, anyway, the guy turns. The guy sends it all the way back for a TD, and they the replay. They need to the replay to confirm that that was the loudest Tar Heels chant I've ever heard in Kenan Stadium ever. It was so loud. That game was amazing. It was definitely number four on my list. Keep in mind, Miami was like top 15 at the time. Um, number three was a couple weeks before that. Um, seven days removed from our tar Thursday night choke. We went to Blacksburg, and nobody expected us to do anything, including us. We were 17-point underdogs and everything. And we go up there, and to our surprise, the football team comes out, and they play. We, we're leading 7-0. The funny part about this, John Shoup owned Bud Foster the whole game. The only reason why this game was even interesting was because TJ Yates makes a bad decision and he throws like an interception at like our 10-yard line. It took Virginia Tech all four downs to get the ball into the end zone, and even that is disputable. They needed replays to confirm both of their touchdowns. Both of their touchdowns were controversial and disputable at their best. So... Anyway, they're up 17-14, and we take the ball, and we draw it up the, we draw it up the field because this could possibly be our last drive. We had to convert a fourth and six, like midfield. So we get in the field goal range, we kick the field goal, so we're tied 17. And then all of a sudden, the drive, Virginia Tech has it. They like they're trying to play for like overtime. So on 39, they give it to their running back, Ryan Williams, and Tajik Powell goes up there and like smacks the ball out of his hands. And then Deontay Williams comes to pick the ball up. So... We got we got the ball back, and we're well in field goal range. We're like at their 22 when this happens. So we just run clock out, and then we kick the field goal, and there it is. We won 2017 over like the 13th best team in the country. Nobody thought this. I mean, this is Lane Stadium on the Thursday night. There's not many teams that can say they can beat that they beat Virginia Tech in Lane Stadium on Thursday night, but UNC is now one of them. Um, number two. The regular season finale that was played March 5th, 
men's basketball last year between Carolina and Duke. Pre-game, the ding dong was amazing. I could not hear myself like the moments before the game. Usually, you can always hear yourself. There's like awkward silence. The place was so loud I could not hear myself like before the game even started, and it stayed that way throughout the whole match. Um, our players did not give Duke any ter- any kind of wiggle room. We were on top of them from the tip off on the whole game. Um, at the we were up like twelve at half. Duke tried to make this little mini run, so the lead got cut to five. But that was it. Cause after that, we jumped on that and we just kept rolling close into the line. We won the ACC championship. I will always remember this game, cause the game was kind of like a highlight reel. Like uh, we can't forget Dexter Strickland dunking no Miles Plumlee, or Kendall Marshall putting that spin move on Seth Curry. You just can't. These are these are always being played in my mind. That's how good the Duke game was. The atmosphere was amazing. The players played phenomenal. We took the ACC outright in a season where Duke was supposed to run away with it. What better way to do it? So, I was very happy. We rushed the court. We celebrated our ACC title. It was real. It was a really good time. To look forward to it. We're supposed to be favorites to win the ACC next year outright. I hope we fulfill that. I think we have a really good chance. Hopefully for that title, national title. And let's go, last but not least, number one, because I need a, probably the rest of this to talk about number one. Number one, this is indisputable. This is the Music City Bowl last year versus Tennessee. The game was played in Tennessee, Nashville. So the, the stadium was like 90% orange. They're like a blue block, and a lot of that blue block was the band. So anyway, we're playing the game. The game is really close, entertaining, you're in your seats and whatnot. Uh, I want to talk about the end because that's what mattered the most. So, what happens is, Tennessee gets a, Tennessee scores a touchdown to go by like three. There's probably like four minutes left. And they go for the PAT, which one of our guys blocked. This is crucial because they're up by three, and the PAT would have put them up by four. But it, it was blocked. So, we get the ball back, and we can't do anything, so we give the ball to them. Timeout management, we're able to use our timeout so we can get the ball back, not long left. And so we get the ball, we draw up the field, penny penalties and whatnot. We're like probably at their 25 now, and we decided to do another running play with like 12 seconds left with no timeout. So we do the running play, and all of a sudden, the field, the field goal unit is trying to run out there. They don't know what they're doing. Our guys, it's just a big mess. There's like 13 men on the field, and TJH like spikes the ball down. So the game's over because they let the clock run out, and the referees say the game's over. And then he goes back and look at the replay, and the replay shows that he did snap the ball with one. He did spike the ball with one second remaining because the snap and the spike was what downed the ball, not the penalty. So that let us kick the um, field goal, and then we was we go to overtime. We trade touchdowns, and then at the same overtime, Quan Sturdivant intercepts one of Tyler Bray's passes. And we're in field goal range, so we just run the clock out, and then we just kick a field goal and win the whole thing. I would elaborate on a lot of this, but YouTube's not giving me a lot of time.